welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today, we're gonna to talk about 1930s outdoor gear. Stay tuned. In doing my research for the 1930s Hobo series, as well as an upcoming 1950s camping series, I came across a number of outdoor items, vintage clothing gear, and clothing items that wouldn't necessarily fit into the Hobo series, but nonetheless, I fell in love with them, and so I've been putting together a collection. Since it's a beautiful snowy day and it's really cold here in southern Ohio, it's about 17 degrees Fahrenheit and dropping, I thought this would be a great time to talk to you about what someone might wear in the 1930s era during the Depression. If they were out hunting, of course, many people had to do that to put food on the table for their families, as well as just being prepared for survival, cold weather, and an emergency overnight stay. So let's get to that right now. The first item that you will note is the wool felt fedora. Now hunting caps came into popularity into the 40s and the 50s, but if you see any pictures of people who were hunting and camping and doing outdoor activities in cold weather in the 1920s and 30s, you will notice that they all believed in dressing very nice. As a matter of fact, style was very important back then, and it was important to be clothed properly for the outdoors, not just to weather the storms and whatever weather might come your way, but also so that you looked good in the wilderness. The next articles that you will notice are these deerskin gloves. They are mittens with a trigger finger. Of course, this adds to your dexterity. They're extremely warm. Of course, they are lined with this wool lining, and believe me, even out here at 17 degrees, my hands are hot to the point of almost sweating when you do any kind of serious activity. Now, they are attached with a cord. This is so you can use your hands to do things. Often you would wear perhaps some wool knit gloves, either fingerless or with fingers in them for extremely cold weather. And of course that way you could do your tasks and then easily put them back on. Now if you're hunting or running a trap line or doing anything, you know how important it is not to drop your gloves, especially if you're working over water or anywhere you think you might kick it over a ledge or something like that, you will find that attaching this is very important. How you attach them is simple. There is a hole that is punched through the gauntlet of the glove and then you can see there is a simple peg with a slip knot onto the leather thong and that way it cannot slip through and you can't lose your mittens. The next item that we come to would be some sort of a musette or bag of sorts, a uh, haversack of type that perhaps would have been used during the First World War, even back into the older wars. Anything that would hold a few bits and pieces of whatever you might need. A man might put his sandwich in here, perhaps a thermos of warm water or coffee that he could warm up over a fire. Inside mine, I have a large handkerchief, and this is wound up around my cup. This is, of course, so I can scoop up water, boil it over a fire. I do have an old cotton rag. This would be used for cleaning up or for grabbing the pot. This is also useful for wiping down the 12 gauge as well as getting any bits of, of snow or condensation off of it and keeping it generally clean. The cloth is wrapped around it to keep it from rattling while it's in the haversack. In case we have to be out late at night, we also have our flashlight. And this says that it can throw a beam up to 500 feet. But this is a really neat thing to have, again, for tracking that game and making sure that you don't get lost at night if you're out that late. Next, on the belt, which is around the high point of the waist, we have a marbles knife, of course a sheath knife, great for any kind of emergencies or taking care of game. Opposite the sheath knife, we have a small hatchet. This, of course, is very useful for processing firewood as well as game, and indeed for that emergency overnight, for building a shelter with pine boughs and branches. Also on the belt, we have a hank of cotton line, about 15 feet long. This, of course, is to drag a deer out of the woods, should that become necessary, as well as for emergency shelter building. 
Cotton cord is very useful for many items and it is typical what you would have seen around the waist of a woodsman in the 1930s. The next item of course would be a nice wool scarf and of course this has multiple uses. Something that you could use up around the head as well as around the mouth in order to keep your mouth and nose warm. And this is what that would look like over the ears and around the mouth and nose if the weather got bitterly cold. Next we have the duck's back jacket. This of course is designed to shed water and with the proper treatment it was indeed quite waterproof, not just weather resistant. Under this would be worn your hunting vest, of course with a space here to put the game in. And along with it your extra shells that you would carry, different loads for different game. As you can see paper cartridges were quite common back in those days. as well as brass. Inside one of the pockets of the vest you might carry something like this which is a 1930s emergency kit by L.L. Bean and if you're interested in seeing the contents of this I'll put a link to it right up here. In the right pocket of the pants if someone were right-handed they might carry something like this. This is a hawkbill blade these were very useful in the outdoors. They were used a lot by tradesmen as well as along the farm areas. You could easily use this blade for many, many tasks around the home and farm out in the back country. It especially lends itself to whittling and carving and shaving bark and things like that. Although you wouldn't do much skinning or processing with this, you would do that with the other sheath knife, but this would come in real handy for a lot of your camp chores. In the other pocket, you would carry something like this. This is a small matchbox, little metal match tin with plenty of matches for an emergency fire. Along with this, you would also carry another small match tin but inside of this you would have some strips of bark and things that you could light easily that you keep dry as tinder again for those emergency fires. On a cotton string around the neck you would carry something like this, a small button compass. This of course very useful for navigating and even though you're not going to do a lot of orienteering with this yet it can keep you walking in a straight line and would have been very useful to the outdoorsman. The cotton string of course very light easy to break if you would get snagged but also keeps you from losing it and because it's cotton it doesn't get cold in the cold weather. And in case you're wondering what this piece is it is an old W.R. Richards from Belgium. The next item of clothing that you might find an outdoorsman wearing in this type of weather would be some sort of a knit sweater like this, some sort of a pullover. Uh, zippers were very common in the 1930s and so you might find something like this to keep you warm. Under that you would have some sort of a nice button-up shirt. This could be wool or it could be cotton or some type of corduroy as this is and of course you would wear this buttoned up all the way to make sure that you kept all your heat in. The pants are made of wool, very heavy wool and thick to keep the weather out and to keep you warm. And of course they would be held in place with suspenders for that nice comfortable walk through the woods. The boots are L.L. Bean boots and we'll get into that more here in just a little bit. There's a certain way you want to wear these. And you will notice that we also have wool leggings which act not only as a legging to keep the lower part of the leg warm, but also act as a gaiter to help keep snow and debris out of the top of the boots. These are very long as they go down inside the boots and actually come up past the knee. And then are simply folded down over the top of the boot, just like so. The pants are the lace-up type. They also have an inner zipper installed for ease of taking them on and off. And of course we're wearing nice thick warm wool socks. All right let's talk about these boots and what's inside of them. Some very important items. What you all may not realize is these do not come with very much insulation in them. There's really not any padding at all so you really need to add your own. Inside we have some sheep's wool. This is real sheep's wool. See the leather there. 
mark for the right side. And this really helps to insulate your feet against the cold of the outdoors and the snow and ice pack beneath your feet. Also inside these boots, they come with a removable felt liner. And this, of course, you can take out if you do get damp or wet from sweat or if you would get into some deep water, you can take these out and dry them by the fire or when you get back home. Now, if you were particularly poor and you couldn't afford wool inserts, you can do what this person did. This is from an old pair of LL beans. You can see quite worn out. But what this is, they have put a layer of old newspaper down underneath and it eventually became molded to the foot. Of course, this has worn off for many years, but that was a trick that you could use. Of course, many of the hobos and different people knew about newspaper. You could wrap up in it and stuff it into your clothes for additional warmth. But here's a good example where someone used it on the sole of their feet to help provide extra insulation for walking in the snow and on the ice pack. And yes, underneath it all, we have the wonderful Union suit. This, of course, would have been something that outdoorsmen would have worn. I got a lot of grief from not using it in my hobo series on what hobos wore in cold weather. They would have worn them if they'd have had them, of course. But we do know that this was something very common back in those days. And uh, yeah, definitely helps as a base layer. And yes, it does have a button flap in the rear. Well, thank you all for watching. I hope you found this interesting. And I do appreciate all of you that have been supporting the channel. All of the thumbs up and the comments and the shares. They really do help. I also want to give a special thank you to my Patreons. Those people who have month after month and year after year now have supported the channel financially. It goes to help purchase the items that I show you. It helps me do research, take trips, and all of those things that you've come to enjoy on the channel. However, I'm getting really cold. It's 16, 17 degrees Fahrenheit, and all I've got on is a union suit, a hat, and some boots. So I think it's time to wrap this video up. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure and check out the links in the description box below, just under the more button. And while you're down there, you'll also find our waypointsurvival.com link. And this is where you can sign up to take survival and bushcraft classes here at our beautiful training facility in Southern Ohio. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time.